Hi everyone, welcome back to The Mystic in the Woods. I'm Kate, and today we are going to be talking about my favorite most used decks and other witchy things from sort of mm, the beginning of the year up until I guess pretty much Beltane, because we're coming up on May 1st. So it feels like a really long time since I've recorded a video because the Q&A and the European Goddesses and Spirits unboxing that I have put on the channel most recently, I actually filmed before the solar eclipse at the beginning of April. And then I ended up sick for like two weeks. Like I had a full flu um, in April. So I haven't really been able to record. And so I thought that this might be a good way to get back into recordings. It's a little bit more casual of a video. We're gonna go through some decks. We're gonna go through some other things. Um, and just kind of chat about my favorite and most used stuff. Now, this is for sort of winter of 2023, winter 2024, because I can feel things shifting. Like I've got new guides stepping forward. I can feel new decks coming in. Um, of course, we're going into like a Beltane here coming up in a couple of days. So the season where I live is also finally starting to change. So it does feel like my practice is going to be changing and the decks that I'm using is going to be changing. So I thought this was a good time to do this list while these decks were at the forefront of my mind. Now let's talk about... So... <laughs> okay, let's talk about these two decks first. These are absolutely my most used decks of the last four months. I guess we're talking after Christmas for this list because I have used these two decks for pretty much everything, my own personal work as well as work with clients since they came into my collection. So the first is the Silver Acorn Tarot. Now this is... Um, not the kind of artwork I would normally go for, for two reasons. Um, I don't really like anthropomorphic, if that's the word I'm looking for, um, animals in my deck. I like my animals to be animals and my people to be people, not my animals to be acting like people, okay? So this is not my normal style, because it's not just an animal deck, so like here the empress is like a pumpkin lady, um, but we do have a lot of animals. Like here's the two of swords and this is an owl. So normally I really don't like animals done this way. And also this, um, just this art style in general, while I think it's very cute, it's not my go-to. But I was really intrigued by this deck and I just thought it was really cute and it could be really fun. And so I asked for it for my birthday because it is an indie deck, it's a little more pricey. Um, even for an indie deck, it's a little pricey. I asked for it for my birthday and I actually received it. And I started working with it right after Christmas. My birthday was in November, the end of November. Um, I started working with it right basically at the new year. And I have <laughs> not stopped. I opened to this deck, I started to use it, and then I just never stopped. Um, which has only happened with a couple of other decks, like my Moonchild Tarot. Um, I just, I never stopped using it. So I actually really, really love this deck. Now I have used this deck for everything. I have used it for my own personal work, which again, my tarot work has been fairly light as compared to what it normally is. But I've used it for myself, um, for when I have been doing daily draws. I've used it for my own shadow work. I've used it to pull spreads for myself. Um, I've used it for content creation within my programs and to make decisions in my business. And I have used it for clients. I have used it within my Reclaiming Eve program to do group readings as well as individual readings. I have used it with my one-on-one -on -one shadow work clients. I have used this deck for everything. It is very quickly rivaling my Darkness of Light Tarot, which we'll talk about here in a second, as my most versatile slash like workhorse type of a deck. It's a deck I can pull out for anybody and read about anything. It's very Rider Waite Smith, so this is Judgment. Here's the High Priestess. It's very Rider Waite Smith, so it's very easy to read. Like it's very, um, it's a very easy reader. And I did not have to spend a lot of time getting to know this deck like I do some other decks in my collection. Um, and not only is it an easy reader that gives you very straight to the point, like simple answers. It doesn't like beat around the bush. It doesn't take the long windy chatty road. It just answers your question. 
And it does so with this really beautiful, clear, gentle voice that's like, hey, here's the answer to your question. And also here's this other information, like here's this other piece that you didn't ask about but that you might want to know about. And it's willing to go as deep into something as you're willing to go or it's willing to stay a little more surface level if that's what you need. I love, love, love this deck. I cannot stop using it. Like I can't, this is probably one of my top decks at this point. I just, I can't imagine not having this deck in my collection. It's on the same card stock or feels the same to me as Pagan Otherworld. So it's like really easy to shuffle. It's holding up really well. I'm hard on my decks and there's like hardly, like maybe a little bit, like maybe a little bit of warping, but I riffle shuffle, I'm hard on my decks. I actually spilled water on this, so I need to buy a backup copy because I panicked when I spilled water on it. And while a few of the edges are a little compromised, you won't be able to see it on here, um, I got the water off really quickly and it's doing really well, so it didn't ruin the deck. So I have loved this deck. Now, I have also been using it with Wisdom of the Wild Things Oracle. Now this I do have like a reveal of on the channel because when I opened it, I so quickly fell in love with it and was just so intrigued by what the creator had put together in this deck that I did a reveal of it. And again, not my, not my usual art style. Okay, so both of these, especially in the winter when I'm really like usually doing serious inner work and I want a serious, more darker deck. Um, both of these artwork, the artwork in both of these decks is a little bit like young or something. I don't know, but I really, so the artwork is not my go-to, plus the artwork in this deck, some of it I find a little bit mm, uncomfortable or triggering or activating in some way. And I've actually found that to be okay. Like it's always okay in a shadow work deck, right? But I have really found that this deck has this beautiful balance of sweetness and depth. Sweetness with a little bite and it's portrayed in the artwork, it's in the guidebook, it's in the keywords, it's in the way that this deck reads. I have, again, I have used this deck for everything. For shadow work, for myself, when I'm doing sessions with clients, for content creation, I use it as a clarifier. It might be the most versatile oracle deck in my collection. The keywords just make sense to me, or the key phrases, so this says bloom in the mud, laughter heals, Communion, Mind That Monkey, Quest Into the Subconscious. There's just something about these key phrases and the artwork that for me really opens up my intuition and allows me to bring not just a new piece of information or another piece of information into the reading. It also allows me to clarify. It allows me to figure out what's underneath something or what's at the root cause of something. Um, I have really, I have just, I have nothing but positive things to say about this deck. Plus it has this really great, like, um, edging on it. It's just, this is, I've been really, really happy with this deck. Everything that I said in the reveal holds. Um, the guidebook is, um, short and easy to read. So you like one page of informa information per card, but these meanings are easy to remember. Like they're not too dense, but they give you enough to sink your teeth into. And for some reason, this deck is so intuitive for me that either the card meaning will just immediately bubble up to the surface or something else entirely will come in. And so it's been a very intuitive deck and it pairs beautifully with my Silver Acorn Tarot. These two decks have had amazing conversations all winter um, and I absolutely love them. I'm gonna talk about briefly, um, so I've been using my Shadow of Darkness Tarot again when I'm running sessions with clients, shadow work sessions. And I've also been using my Darkness of Light Tarot in that capacity as well. So this, before my Silver Acorn Tarot came into the picture, this would have absolutely been the most versatile deck in my collection, the most workhorsey deck that I could turn to again for anyone, for anything. Um, I love the artwork in this deck. It's also easy to read. Like it's a very, um, it's very Rider-Waite-Smith. 
Um, and where the Silver Acorn Tarot will answer your question and then offer you extra information, this deck will answer your question and then ask you another one. And I have really found that in my collection, some decks are question answerers and some decks are question askers. Some ask questions, some answer questions. Some do both. This deck will do both. It will say, here's the answer to your question. Like it's going to give you a, a, a straight answer. And then it's also going to ask you if you have considered this question you didn't ask. And so for that reason, it has been very helpful in shadow work for, for myself or for others. But again, I can use this for anything. Look at this nine of coins. I love this nine. Um, but my silver acorn tarot has started to rival it. And so these would probably, because this is still one of my favorite tarot decks of all time. Um, it was one of my first tarot decks. I love it. I use it all the time. It's again, it's held up beautifully. Like you can definitely see a little bit of warping. I edged this with a black Sharpie. It doesn't come edged. Um, you can see some warping, but I've had it for years and it's holding up beautifully. So I've been using this deck a lot as well. Now I'm going to just briefly mention the Moonchild Tarot, my Shadow Work Edition, because I've talked about this deck basically since I got it. It's made every single list. This is my main deck for working with Asherah, who's one of my primary deities. Um, this is a deck I love for shadow work and for journey work. And I use this deck all the time as well. So I won't talk about it too much because you can go see like all my other videos to hear me talk about the Moonchild Terra the Shadow Work Edition, but I do really love this deck and this would absolutely be one of my top decks for like since Christmas. Um, so for personal work, it's basically just been the Silver Acorn Tarot, this, and my um, Wisdom of the Wild Things Oracle. I have absolutely, you know, my um, the Kim Kranz Archetype deck I have used a lot. Um, but really as the winter has progressed, I have used less and less card work in my own practice. Now I want to talk about two other decks quickly because I've used them some, I love them. And also I talk about them a lot and they are currently either on pre-order or about to be on Kickstarter. So the first one is my Tattered Wings Oracle. And I've talked about how I use this in conjunction with my Moonchild Tarot a lot, that it's a really great shadow work deck. I love the small guidebook that comes with it. It's very intuitive. Um, I love the color palette. And this is one of those decks that doesn't necessarily tell you what you want to hear. It tells you what you need to hear. And this is an ind independently produced deck and she has it on pre-order currently. It's currently on pre-order. So I'll make sure that the link um, for that is below. So I wanted to just mention this because I know that when I show this deck in videos, I usually get comments from you, from viewers who are like really intrigued by the deck. Look at this image. You, like, <laughs> I just, I really love this deck. Um, I'm probably going to pre-order a backup copy. This is another deck I spilled water on. Um, the gilding didn't handle that very well, but like the decks are not designed to hold so you can see like how it's worn off. Um, that was because I spilled water. I need to stop setting water near my decks, obviously. But this is available for pre-order right now. And I wanted to mention that because a lot of you, like I said, whenever I show this decks, it is one of my top Oracle decks. Um, people are always really intrigued by it, but it's never been in print and all these things. I also want to mention the European Goddesses and Spirits Oracle deck. Now, I just did an unboxing of this deck, so you can go back to that, well, a month ago for me, but I posted it a couple weeks ago. So you can go back and watch the unboxing for like all my initial thoughts. But I've been using it, even though I've been sick, I've been using this deck the last month and I've used it with my Reclaiming Eve students. I've used it um, a couple of times for my own work. And I really, I really like this deck a lot. Um, and the, Kickstarter will start for this May 1st, so it'll be available on Kickstarter and or she will be running a Kickstarter campaign, excuse me, whatever the correct terminology there is. And this deck, um, everything, again, everything that I said in my unboxing holds true. Even the little white book gives you a lot of really good information and then um, a handful of really good journal prompts. And I have found this deck to be, if, if we're going to use it, 
to you know ask a question and get an answer i have found it to be very accurate to provide very good insight um I, I really love this deck. Like I'm, I'm, I really, really love this deck. I may even back it on on Kickstarter. Um, Joanna sent me this copy to review for you guys, but I may even back it on Kickstarter and get a, grab a second copy of it because I really love this deck. And this is the only. I'm gonna do a. Um, whew, I'm a little everywhere today. I'm gonna do a goddess deck list um, because I only have a handful of decks like this where it's like a compilation of goddesses or witches or whatever. And this is the only one where I can understand something about the goddess's, um, like, personality or story looking at the card image. For all my other decks, they're just really pretty women on the cards. And I certainly, like, I'll talk, well, I'll talk about that when I get to that deck list. Anyway. So I wanted to mention this one here quickly because I have been using it in April. I really love this deck a lot and I'm really impressed with it so far. And because the Kickstarter is starting May 1st, I just wanted to mention it in case anybody wants to get a copy of this while the Kickstarter campaign is going. Okay, so that's it for decks. So then we're gonna move into just a few other random sort of, um, I'm just like looking around at the stuff I've got sitting here. Um, random sort of stuff that I've really been loving this winter. So first of all, I bought a couple of really big journals from Paper Blanks. And a paper, let me look at, yeah, Paper Blanks. Um, so you can just Google that. And I decided to get a couple of really big ones because if you've been following the channel or me on Instagram, then you know that like right now I'm really deeply, really deeply engrossed with a bunch of training um, for, I, I, it's a whole thing. Like I, my personal work this winter has really been sitting in sacred ceremony, doing journey work with my guides. My guides have really been pushing me. Um, I'm enrolled in priestess training and training to clear parasitic entities. And um, so, so my personal practice has been a lot of learning. Oh, okay. stop. My, my, can't, uh, my phone gave me a warning there. Um, so I've been like learning stuff, right? In my head and then practicing it and embodying it. And then also when you go through these types of trainings, your guides will really push you and you will go through your own initiations on the topics. So I've really, really been going through going through it the last, you know, since the first of the year. So I knew going into these trainings that I was gonna wanna journal, keep things organized. So I got the big ones. Okay, so this is from Paper Blank, and I think that journaling and record keeping is so much easier and so much more fun if you are writing in a journal that you feel makes, it, it makes it like, hmm, that feels magical for you, right? So look at this, look at this, and it's like a little bit, like it's just so pretty, and it has these clasps, but they have all kinds, like this is a hard cover um with clasps and it's like an eight and a half by 11. they have smaller more normal journals as well the paper and i am a paper snob and a pen snob and the paper is beautiful to write on like i love the paper um this one is unlined this one is lined and look at like even the what like the end like whatever this part of the journal is even it's like the whole thing it's just like a whole experience to write in these journals so i've heard other creators talk about paper blank journals i'll show you this one for a minute here um i've heard other creators talk about paper blank journals so i thought i'd give it a try see when this one has like an antique look on the edges um this one i've been using more so let me just get to blank pages here um this one is lined and they have like the ribbon. So anyway, I've really, this was my first purchase from Paper Blanks and I really loved it. Before this, my last round of journals, um, I have them sitting here, are the, these are from Barnes and Noble, like the bookstore. <laughs> and they, I had bought three of these. I have like another blue one with, um, that's different. But these were at Barnes and Noble before that and I purchased these. So like this one I created a whole program in, this I created a different program in. I've got more program, like some workshops coming out for you guys soon. Um, but anyway, there's just another option for journals that I have really loved in the last year. So anyway, this was my first purchase from Paper Blanks. It will not be the last. 
uh, look at like how nice they look like. I'm just, guys, guys, you don't have to spend a lot of money, but get yourself a journal that feels magical to write in. Get a pen that makes it feel luxurious to write and it will make your journaling and your record keeping and your note keeping just better. It will make the whole thing better. Okay, so then the other things that I wanted to talk about is, I feel like I'm missing something. Like I'm looking around at my stuff and I feel like I'm missing something, but maybe not. Um, when I did my 2023 roundup video, I talked about the oils from Sacred Soleil. I'll put her link below. And now I have been using them for longer. They are all oily because I am hard on my stuff. They came to me in perfect condition. Um, so I purchased three from her at the in 2023 it would have been the, the final quarter of 2023 and I you guys these are absolutely worth it so this one is a road opener rich or a road opener oil this one is a protection oil so this is divine protection and this is a domination oil it says do as I say I use the divine protection oil every single day on me and my kid as a part of my morning routine, um, as a part of the daily like spiritual protection routine that I do. Um, I also put this on my candles. That's it. I knew I had another one. Let me grab my candle. Um, I also put this on my candle whenever I sit down to do anything. So whether I'm journeying with my guides, reading tarot, running a session, running a group, it doesn't matter. I always, this is my candle. I'll talk, it's just a beeswax candle, but I'll tell you where I got it and why I'm excited about it in a minute. Um, so I just put a, like a drop of it on the candle to, as a part of like my opening ritual for that type of stuff, like casting a circle and all the things. Um, the road opener. So then when I sit down to do like really big work, especially when to be clearing things, um, then I do all three. So I do the protection oil. I do the domination do as I say oil and I do the road opener oil. I put them on me and I put them on my candle and I light my candle and it gives the extra boost. Now I don't do a lot of like uh, spell work or anything like that, but I have no doubt that these these oils would give whatever you're doing that extra boost. I, I will absolutely continue to purchase from her. They are lasting me a very long time, especially given that I use them every single day on two people. Um, they are lasting. I love them. The smell is not overwhelming. I'm very sensitive to smells. Um, absolutely love it. I also purchased a mug. I purchased mugwort for the first time from her. And this is probably my new go-to for sacred smoke, for clearing spaces, for clearing decks. Um, again, this is part of my like circle casting, um, getting ready to hold sacred space for people. This is a part of my routine. Um, it's very ancestrally aligned for me and very, even my spiritual lineages, it's very aligned with. So that's one of the smokes that I really like to use now. And then finally, I was just going to mention this candle. Now this is just a beeswax candle. It was like twice as tall when I purchased it, but here's the deal, okay? I have really had trouble finding beeswax candles that burn well. Like I know they're supposed to burn well and I, maybe I just had really bad luck, but I've really had trouble with it. And so this one was twice, like twice as big as I, as this. Um, I think it's supposed to burn for 60 hours. I don't know if it actually will or not. Um, I will put the link to this below as well. I will put the link to, because I got this from a small company as well. So I'll put the link below and um, it's, actually, let me retract my, my, my previous statement. So. I have trouble with beeswax because I have had a few unlucky scenarios where the candles burn for like 10 minutes and then they start to go out, okay? Also, some of them burn too cleanly. Like I like some of this, you know, part that's standing up here, a little bit of drip, you know? Um, I like that, but I really prefer beeswax. The energetics work really well with my energetics. They burn cleanly as in like what's going into the air. 
Um, I like how they smell. I really like beeswax candles and I really like to anoint my candles as an offering, as a ritual to bring in whatever energies I'm trying to bring in. Like it's a really important piece of my practice. And so I went through a period of time where I was really struggling to find candles that were working for me. So I will put the the link to this below but i have really enjoyed this candle i will app i have another one ready to go i'm gonna buy the other sizes because they have a variety of sizes on the site and um yeah i'll put the link below because part of my 2024 goals is to be more intentional with just my time, just in general, my time, my energy, what I eat, how I treat my body, and where I spend my money. I'm really trying to spend money at smaller companies, at women-owned companies, companies that are owned by people of color, um, companies that are good to the environment and good to their people along the entire production chain, production chain. So I also operate on like a good, better, best situation, okay? so. I'm not always purchasing the things that are the best possible, like best for the environment, best with their people, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to take steps to always improve. Like I'm trying to decrease the amount of plastic that comes into our life, all these things. That's a whole other video. If that's something that you guys want me to talk about, I am happy to do that. I have really been cleaning up like my beauty routine so that it's better to the environment, small companies, all that stuff. I'm happy to make that video if you're interested. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. So, but I did want to quickly share that I finally found a beeswax candle that I really, really like that gives me that good balance of um, burns well, not too drippy, uh, but still gets a little bit of that character in there as it's burning, right? Okay, so that has been my uh, favorite things from early 2024, I guess, is really what it is, is January 1st to May 1st. So if there's anything here that you do want me to talk about more, let me know. Otherwise, the links for Sacred Soleil, the candle, and paper blanks will be below. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.